Hey folks, got something a little different for you today. Uh, my good friend Embert12, uh, who I first battled in uh, the Pokemon Master 14's tournament, was bas was wondering what would have happened if our battle uh, way back when had gone a little bit differently. So here I've got some uh, footage from our original battle. Uh, it looks like crap because it's been transcoded about a half dozen times, um, just so I could incorporate it in this battle. But so anyway, he led off with Aerodactyl, I led off with... Um, Poopaloop, my mammal swine. I went ahead and ice sharded him, um, uh, but of course he's got a focus sash, so he's going to survive that ice shard um, and is going to be able to set up stealth rock. Um, back when I originally recorded uh, the narration for this battle, I was complaining that I hadn't sent out Crobat because I figured Crobat could outspeed it. Turns out Crobat, Crobat and Aerodactyl have the fat, uh, the same speed, so it wouldn't have made a difference except for my taunt would have come, uh, you know, one. Uh, speed, uh, one speed point too late. Uh, so this was actually not a bad choice. Um, so anyway, after I take down Aerodactyl, uh, my opponent sent out Weavile, um, who I obviously had to switch out from because, uh, Hoopaloop was choice banded. Uh, so I switched into Pazuzu, my, um, Zapdos, who I figured could one hit KO it with Heat Wave, especially since he didn't have, um, Focus Dash, since the rules of this tournament were that, um, item clause was on, only one Pokemon can have any item. Um, so Pazuzu, I was going to go ahead and use Heat Wave, um, but he went ahead and he went ahead and used Brick Break on the switch, which didn't do anything, so it was a really great switch for me. Um, so just some leftovers recovery action. Um, so again, I'm going to go ahead and use Heat Wave to try to take it out, but Weavile was faster, um, and got in an Ice Punch, which I figured I could survive because um, Zapdos was specially defensive, and indeed it did survive, but then I got the Freeze Hacks. So I was like, oh man, and I, we figured that that cost me the match. So um, we decided to recreate our team as best we could. Um, we both changed a few things since then. I've changed an item and done a rebreed, but basically everything should be the same. So I'm um, just going to try to do everything to start off with the exact same way and see if that Freeze Hacks really did matter. So, yeah, just the same stuff going on. Um, I get Aerodactyl down to its Focus Sash. Um, my opponent sets up the Stealth Rock. Uh, and things are going pretty much the same way they did before so far. Um, yeah, so down goes Aerodactyl. And um, Mammoth Swine is still up uh, with full health. Uh, and But obviously he's going to send out Weavile, and so I'm going to have to switch out. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, this is basically a giant what, uh, what if. What if I'd, uh, things had gone a little bit differently? If the, you know, fate had, uh, worked things out a little bit differently, uh, would that have changed anything? And would I have, um, beaten him in the Pokemon Master 14's tournament? Anyway, uh, here comes a brick break, doesn't do any anything. Um, and he goes ahead and uses Ice Punch. And so here we're gonna see, well, what I, what's gonna happen here. Um, and then the craziest thing happens, he gets the freeze hacks again. I mean, the odds have to be astronomical to get that, ha to have that happen again. Um, but so, you know, maybe I'll unfreeze since I've got a 20% chance of that, so I decide I'm gonna keep going. Actually, that doesn't matter, he's faster, so, uh, no way to know if I would have unfrozen. So, we were both, you know, we're communicating on YouTube at this point, and we're like, what the heck? This just completely defeated the purpose of our battle. So, what the heck are we gonna do? Um, so, uh, rather than go on, uh, with our battle, uh, we decide that we're going to try this again, and this is the only time you're ever going to see me give in. Uh, he gave in too, so it was a draw, um, from a technical standpoint, but, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and try this damn thing again. Um, so, same thing, same setup, we're going to proceed in the exact same way up until the freeze hacks, and hopefully... Third time's gonna be a charm, and we'll actually be able to see what happens if I what would have happened if I didn't get the freeze hacks. Um, so yeah, ice shard, uh, blah blah blah. Um, yeah, so I guess this is getting kind of repetitive at this point. I'm trying to I in the editing I tried to increase the pace a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it shows, um, but yeah. So down goes Aerodactyl, up went his Stealth Rock, uh, all that jazz. Uh, out goes Weavile, um, back goes Foopaloop, out goes Pazuzu, um, here comes his Brick Break. <clears throat> uh, it's not very effective, as so many times before. Weavile goes ahead and uses Ice Punch, and here we see, is there going to be a Freeze Hacks yet again? Uh, drum roll, please. 
No. And so I get to go, get to go ahead and use Heat Wave. And so I'm so excited. So I figure this is going to one-hit KO his Weavile. And then I see it survives. So pretty much all of that was pointless. Because, okay, fine. Yeah, now I've, Weavile is down to less than full health. But I wouldn't have been able to survive anyway. And so Pazuzu, who was my counter to his... Um, you know, to a lot of his Pokemon, he's got a Caesar on this team, he's got uh, Gyarados on this team, and without Zapdos, I'm completely, you know, I've got no counters for these Pokemon. So, uh, but it didn't matter anyway. Um, yeah, I, I thought about pulling back, but Pazuzu was a too low health, you know, the, its health was too low to actually do um, me any good, because I would have had to just switch it out later for Death Fodder. So, um, I go ahead and send out Weave, uh, sorry, send out, uh, Stella. Um, not exactly sure why I did this. Um, I guess it's faster and I could do the U turn. Um, but I don't end up doing the U turn. I go ahead and use Brave Bird, uh, which, you know, it's got no health anyway, so it's gonna be fine. But, um, I guess I was predicting that he'd switch or something. Um, or actually, if he didn't switch, then the U turn would have been bad for me because I would have had to switch before and, Switch before him, and so he would have gotten the advantage of knowing who my next Pokemon would be. So, Brave Bird was the good option, and I knew it was going to outspeed it, so um, it's all good. I'm just glad that he didn't have Ice Shard or anything. Oh yeah, so this is the difference. Um, Crobat is a rebreed and has Black Sludge now instead of Life Orb, um, since that doesn't break Item Claws. Anyway, there was a speed tie here between his Crobat and mine. Uh, his Crobat won and so uh, and got off of Hypnosis. But you know, if I've got to have a Pokemon put to sleep, Stella's not that bad of a choice, since you know we've got Sleep Claws enabled. Anyway, um... On the switch, Crobat uses Pluck. Not exactly sure why. I don't think Pluck would have. Uh, Pluck just eats berries. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use Zen Headbutt here. Uh, not predicting the switch. Um, and uh, my opponent, I'm not uh, goes ahead and sends out Togekiss, um, which is going to pretty much wall me uh, because Togekiss is kind of bulky as anything. Um, but anyway, uh, that looks like it's going to be a three-hit KO kind of situation, and I figure, you know, I'm faster. There's a non-zero chance of me getting flinch hacks. Uh, I guess it's a 40% chance. And so I figure, you know, might as well stay in, see what I can get. Um, Togekiss goes ahead and uses Fire Blast, which is going to deal a super effective hit. Um, but Jirachi survives with basically no HP, but it's better than zero, so, um, anyway, I keep using Zen Headbutt because that's the only thing I can do, um, but, uh, QZ, my um, Invert 12 uh, switches out, and so this Zen Headbutt is going to be heavily resisted. It still does a fair amount, um, but I'm going to go ahead and call Jirachi back at this point because there's just no point. Uh, I go ahead and send out uh, Empoleon, uh, just hoping he doesn't use superpower, but I figured he wouldn't. Um, and yeah, he, I predicted the bullet punch quite well, so uh, Empoleon survives the hit, uh, and so I think I'm going to be able to set up, you know, I realize at this point, well, he now he's going to use superpower, and that's going to kill me in one hit, so what's the point of all this? This was a bad move on my part, and I'm just, I'm just, you know, frustrated here with myself, but I go ahead and set up Stealth Rock, just in case, um, and somehow I outspeed him, uh, and the reason is because he didn't invest anything in his speed, and I invested a little bit in, um, Empoleon speed. I think, actually, the, the investment was specifically to outrun, um, this scissor build, um, but I'll have to look up on Smog on what it actually was designed to outrun. But anyway, I do uh, outrun him, and I managed to set up the Stealth Rock before getting KO'd by Superpower. So I'm not sure Stealth Rock in return for a KO, I'm not sure that was the best trade, but it is what it is. I do the calculation, and Jirachi should be able to survive being switched back in um, to the Stealth Rock, but I instead choose to go for Mamoswine because I'm thinking he's not going to switch out, uh, or he's going to have to switch out anyway, um, and so I'm going to go ahead and use Rock Slide here. Uh, I know I'm faster, because if Empoleon was faster, um, then he's going to be faster. So I take the Bullet Punch, um, I survive it with not as much HP as I was expecting, um, but yeah... But the point is, he does survive, uh, and so, and I am able to take out Scissor with, um, with Rock Slide, so that's not bad. Um, so I've taken out his Caesar, and uh, out goes Togekiss, who didn't realize would faint due to um, the uh, Stealth Rock, or maybe he did and he just wanted to get him out of the way, but, you know, but it might as well keep him around for uh, 
I would have kept him around for um, Death Fodder. Anyway, out comes Gyarados, um, who takes some Stealth Rock damage, and I know there's no way I can outspeed him, but I'm not going to let him set up a Dragon Dance, so I'm hoping that he's going to be greedy and go for the Dragon Dance predicting my switch. So I go ahead and use Rock Slide, and somehow I do manage to outspeed him, which is really strange. Um, I talked to him later, and he said he basically invested nothing in um, Gyarados's uh, speed. So that was, again, lucky for my EV spread. So that was great. And now he's down to his last Pokemon, which happens to be Crobat. Um, so I figure I can, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and fodder him. Uh, Crobat uses Cross Poison, um, which is resisted. Um, just, I guess, no better move. Uh, I use Rock Slide, and it's going to go ahead and take him out. And so I have won the match, and things went a lot differently this time around, but it wasn't due to that freeze hacks. Um, it was due to the fact that I made different decisions. So the end result is that he, he deserved that win way back when, just as I deserve this win now. So as is, not, as is often the case, it's not the hacks that determines your victory, it's how you play the game. Anyway, comment, rate, subscribe, and challenge. So long.